Makanda Permaculture is a video series that follows the efforts of a few individuals around the Makanda region, formerly known as Gramstown, towards sustainable living and environmental improvement. In this episode, you're going to learn how to build your own permaculture garden, courtesy of a one-day training session by Red Beard Permaculture. Some of the training that we've been doing in Pedi and Surrounds with the uh, Ubunye Foundation, um, we would go to to uh, uh, preschool creches um, and clinics around Pedi um, in the rural environment. And, and uh, because of uh, our historical past, a lot of these people have been displaced into really inhospitable places. Um, and, and they've lost a lot of their indigenous knowledge because of such moves. Yes, it's a lot of information to take in, in, in just one day, but imagine what, what we could do if, if people could get two or three weeks intensive training on, on, on such information. When we do our one day training sessions, it, it's really just to wake up, wake people up. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Edward. Uh, most people just call me Redbeard because of this red beard that I have. So <laughs> it's the easiest way to remember me. Unfortunately, I don't speak as it calls it just yet. I've only been up, been out here, what, three years now, so I'm still learning. Uh, so for those of you that don't understand what what we go through, please ask Mzi to translate or Colin to translate. They'll be happy to to explain to you in your mother tongue what we're doing today. We've got a cameraman here with us today. The young gentleman's name is Kutle. Um, he's a student at Rhodes University and uh, he's doing a multimedia project on uh, the work that we're doing. So let's all give him lots of smiles today. <laughs> and let's show the world what we can do. Let's show the world that we can look after ourselves. It's not as hard as what people think. It's really just connecting with nature. This is called a double reach bed. So I can reach to the middle from both sides. I can always reach down to the middle of the bed from both sides. We often make the mistake that we make our beds too big, too wide. And the problem with that is that you have to step into your bed to get to your vegetables. We don't want it too wide because we don't want to step into our vegetables. If we step into the garden, we make the soil compact. If we make it hard, the roots can't get through. And if the roots can't get through, the vegetables don't grow as big as they should. So you don't want to step into your garden bed. You step into your pathway. We have pathways for it. So the reason we're out here now is we're going to use a lot of this material. One of the issues we have here is that there's not a lot of topsoil. I mean, you, you start digging and you, you hit rock immediately, which means that we need soil. But we can't bring in soil because that costs money. And we don't want to anyway because we've got everything we need right here. We're going to build our own compost. We're going to make our own compost inside the garden bed by using stuff that's already here. There is no such a thing as anything bad in nature. Everything in nature has a role to play. Normally when you build a garden, people tell you weeds are a bad thing. They're not. There's nothing bad about this plant. This plant didn't wake up this morning and go, I'm going to be a bad plant today. <laughs> this plant is doing what the plant is meant to do. 
Weeds only come up in environments where they need it. So these thistles, it's a common weed out here because our soil is pretty hard and very poor. This plant's job is to bring all the nutrients from deep in the soil, bring it up to the top soil. So when you look at soil, six inches, this is how much topsoil we have around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, six inches. This is how much soil we have to feed every human being on the planet. This plant's job is to bring everything to that top layer. The ash and the charcoal from your fires, yeah. use it in your gardens. The reason for that is our soil in the Eastern Cape is very acidic. Okay. If, if, you, if you're like the farmers and you can afford bags of lime, that's how the farmers normally do it. To balance out the pH level in their soil, they buy bags of lime. <coughs> it's very expensive. I mean, I can't afford it. I wouldn't buy it even if I could afford it. Because the wood ash and the charcoal from your fires does exactly the same job. So you mix that into your soil or put it on top of your soil and it's going to turn your soil into a better balance at the end of the day so that more things can grow because only certain things grow well in acidic soil and most other things don't. So we had to build gardens from scratch. Um, we basically had to start improving the soil by assisting nature with the things that she will require. Um, so we're actually using those things that are around us uh, like cow manure or goat manure and those kinds of things. So all of the stuff you're putting in here now will become the soil eventually. All of the worms and everything, they're going to come in and they're going to think it's Christmas because it's free food for them. And they turn all of this dead material into life. That's their job. So we've now built up this nice bed. Now, this bed needs a blanket. All beds need blankets. So you get, you can leave it like this and you can grow something in it, it'll grow fine. But you're going to have a lot of weeds coming up everywhere. Lots of weeds. And you're going to have to give it water all the time because it keeps going dry. In South Africa, our, our rainfall, the water that we get is less than the water that we lose. Okay, so the evaporation rate, the, the rate we lose water, is faster than the rate we get water. That's why we're a water poor country. So we have to try and keep the water in the soil. That's why we're going to build a duvet for this bed. We're going to build a blanket for this bed. And that's why we brought all that cardboard. So we're literally going to use cardboard to make a bed, to make a blanket for this bed. Remember I spoke about function. This cardboard will have many functions. Number one. It holds water, because when cardboard gets wet, it sucks in water. So that's one thing. Number two, it will keep the light from getting to the, to the weed seeds, so your weeds can't come up. Number three, if your roots are cold, the blanket will keep them warm. Number four, if your bed is warm, the duvet will cool it down because it breathes. This bed is specifically designed so that you don't have to work so hard on it once it's in place. It's specifically designed so once it's in place that you don't have to use a lot of water. So now we're going to add to this blanket by putting grass, dry grass, not wet grass, dry grass down. The reason for that is if we leave this, the first wind that comes up, whoop, there goes your cardboard, it's going to fly away. <laughs> Can you guys see now that we've, we've basically created one big sponge? Um, so that's the top layer of our garden and what we then start talking about is the type of things that you would plant when you start off a garden like that. Um, and uh, you'd like to ensure that you've got quite a few nitrogen fixers there in the, in the beginning, especially in our environment 
which is in a nitrogen poor environment, which means that the carbon just takes that much longer to actually break up. So planting beans and stuff like that is, is, is pretty important in the environments that you do that. But we always tell people to start with the, the flowers and then the herbs and then the vegetables. And the point behind that is we want to confuse the pests, pests as much as possible. A monoculture does not work because you're basically uh, putting all that food stuff up as a buffet, um, which is why so much uh, pesticide needs to get used. So what we do in our gardens is, is we, we, we do polyculture, as many different things as possible, as nature intended. The more complex the system, the stronger the system, because the more it'll take to break it. Um, so we start with flowers to invite bees and confuse pests. Um, and then we move on to herbs, which, is, which ha have similar properties when it comes to confusing bugs and so on and so forth. And plus, it has the culinary advantage that you can eat it and, and it, it becomes cheaper for you to have flavorful food. Same goes for a lot of the flowers, you can eat them too. And only then do you start thinking about what kind of vegetables do you grow, where do you grow them, how do you place them. Um, I know it's difficult because our stomachs do a lot of the thinking for us. But even in, 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 in the basic training that I provide when it comes to these vegetable gardens, there has to be some kind of understanding of permanence, of continuance. Um, so it can't just always be annuals, it can't just always be the same thing, and these are the reasons why. Um, and this is how we, how we will improve the system so that the, the next time we pull something from it, it will be even better. So we continue with improving our environment to benefit ourselves. So ladies and gentlemen, you've now built this garden bed. You need to leave it for two weeks. The reason for that is there's so much good stuff in here now, it needs to spread. So when it's time to plant, you make a hole through the cardboard, just a little hole, okay? You make a little hole through that cardboard and you put a handful of soil in there or compost and you plant your seed. Umane Ushakula Jalon Shalo, your Sugang alone, Don Bona, Ion Angela, Lena Sifundileo, Elula, Unalentela, Silly Manga, Hibiscatis, Limela, and Ioba, Yona Ia Sabin Sakaku. It was a name the Tina, the Funu Sosa Zonga is with for was the citizens of Dark, then Gogo sees Yap Ziatikanis. Kuleum Klum Kuba, Slimanga, who went and the West cities is our baller, who went and the squaws, who went the Ogum Saba low tamb, Utambe Luba, Oz Kulis is Jalo is Zbekut Ganaba, I right, Loki or Mat. In about when any Indila honors bonus Ulimanga, you're in Ugyanga family. Yes, Subandi, Boni Lugut, Yandi, Kubara Kuksha. In the Leon and Lela, and not in the Zakuba, I will really move a rapper when the Doban de Chacon in a familiar. Really comes back down to how. Um, these practices, conventional farming or conventional agricultural practices really have depleted our land to a point where the land is no longer able to produce the kind of crops that the first time you planted or the second time you planted was able to do. Um, and so it becomes the land becomes barren but what really does happen is there is always a sense of waste and one of the big focuses on that is that the certain wastes or, 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 or surplus from our systems become the food or the productive session for for other systems um, another, another side of it I suppose that, that we, we, we really look at um, is, is trying to develop closed-loop systems 